Well, good morning and happy Monday to you. Uh, we finished with the parable of the Good Samaritan and there's just one more story to tackle before we move into Luke 11. And it's another famous story. This time it's about Mary and Martha. Now, the story has a larger context. Jesus is on the home stretch of his ministry and is making his way down to Jerusalem one last time. Passover is approaching and so is his death. But none of the disciples have really registered this. Um, Jesus has hinted at it. Actually, he's been quite direct. But if they heard, they've mentally fired it in the too hard to understand drawer. One quick geography lesson. Have a look at the map that's now on screen. Bethany is in what you could call Jerusalem's commuter belt. It's just two miles outside the city on the eastern flank of the Mount of Olives. Here's a slightly different map with contour lines on it. And what you can see is that the road from Bethany to Jerusalem goes up over the top of the Mount of Olives then steeply down to the Kidron Valley via another village, Bethphage. The temple is just inside Jerusalem's East Gate, or Golden Gate as it's sometimes referred to, and that's where he's ultimately heading. We're going to meet that route again later. But as you can clearly see, Bethany makes a very convenient stop-off route to the temple and we know it's not the only time that Jesus has prevailed upon Mary, Martha and Lazarus's hospitality. Now for passing interest, Bethany is now actually a settlement called El Azaria, a name it originally got from its connection with, with Lazarus who Jesus raised from the dead at the same place. The modern settlement, El Azaria, is a cooperative of Israeli smallholders. It's called a Moshav for what it's worth. About 1,200 souls. It's a bit different from a kibbutz, but the principles involved are loosely similar. You probably know the story. Um, I've personally heard more sermons on this than I've had hot dinners. Jesus and entourage arrive. Um, and the expectation is a teaching session for the boys while the women get dinner for a, a minimum of 16 people. Martha gets irate because she's slaving in the kitchen while Mary, her sister, is idle, taking in Jesus' every word. Jesus refuses to tell Mary to shift her derriere and in fact, says Jesus, she's made the right decision. And by implication, Martha, you've made the wrong one. It's a story about getting your priorities right, we're told. Well, it is. And that slant is perfectly justified, even if it's a bit done to death. However, I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of less well-flagged points in this story. The first is that Mary sitting at Jesus' feet is not an issue of female subordination in case you thought it was. It's what everyone did with their rabbi, Paul himself, giving a speech to an angry crowd in Jerusalem in Acts 22, says that he sat at the feet of Gamaliel, a highly regarded rabbi of the day. The second is that Mary had chosen the better portion the NIV entirely misses the nuance here because it just says that Mary had chosen what is better. And the idea of portion connects food, which is what Martha was attending to, with the Torah, the Word of God, Jesus' Bible. It links back to the idea that man shall not live by bread alone. You find that in Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hence, Jesus' comment that few things are needful 
and food was not one of them. But listening to the teaching of Messiah was and still is. So, are you feeding your soul with food that matters? Alan Hughes, grace and peace to you and have a good week. Thank you.